Well, yesterday Our Lady gave me a really, really beautiful interlocution about preparing for Christmas of all things. It really surprised me, but it's very beautiful, so here goes. My children, although it is only November, already the shopping and commercial frenzy of Christmas has already begun, and so must her spiritual preparation. Consider a pregnant woman who is due to give birth at Christmas. For some of you, you will understand all too well what this is like, as your baby grows inside you and affects all aspects of your life. Consider the miracle as the baby grows each day until on that wonderful day when you give birth. My children, such is the miracle of Christmas when the child Jesus is growing within each one of you through the grace of baptism. Yet just as a pregnant woman must be mindful of her health and of what she does and eats so as to maintain the baby's health, so too must you be mindful of your souls and Jesus who lives within you. My children, how often have I told you that prayer is the food for the soul and that most of you do not pray enough. Pray, my children, until prayer becomes your passion and your life, just as an expectant mother cares for her child. My children, begin preparing for Christmas by prayer, and when you see the frenzy of commercialism, turn inwardly to Jesus and console him for those who do not know him and hurt him greatly over this holy season. Yes, my little ones, begin now, and I will help you have a very holy and peaceful Christmas filled with the true joy and happiness of celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, your God, your Lord, and your Saviour. Wow! Honestly, for me, it gave me this sense of holy joy. It's like Christmas time, we all know, is this extremely special time when special graces from heaven are prepared. Someone said that Christmas time is also the time when the most amount of souls from purgatory are released. In other words, Christmas time in the spiritual realm is a bit like winning the lottery. But like anything else, we have to be prepared. And that's why Our Lady's asking us to prepare our hearts. And so she's asking us, if you like, she's inviting us to a counter remedy. When you walk into your local shops now, or when you walk down the streets and you see the Christmas lights and the Christmas this and the Christmas that, she's saying turn inwardly to Jesus and use that as a reminder to prayer. Sometimes people speak of a trigger, I was triggered. Well, make us, ourselves, if you like, triggered to pray. When we see all this craziness, turn inwardly and pray. Pray for the people who do not understand properly the meaning of Christmas. And afterwards, let all the craziness, if you like, even further give us that resolve to have even more holy Christmas and even more prayerful Christmas. And so Our Lady says it's only November, but already the frenzy of commercialism has begun. But she uses this wonderful example of a pregnant woman. And funny enough, at the moment, one of my friends is pregnant and she's due on Christmas Eve. You know who you are. And so imagine as I see her now preparing, um, the lump, if you like, the bump is getting bigger. Her mother has flown over. She's going to be with her. The preparations are happening and yet she has to be careful in her job. She can't um, lift everything that she used to lift before. She has to watch what she eats because what she eats affects the baby. Our Lady is using the exact same analogy when it comes to our souls. What we do affects our souls. When we pray that nourishes our souls, just like as when that pregnant woman eats good food, healthy food, the necessary vitamins and minerals, it's going to help the health of the baby. Same thing, when we pray, we're nourishing our inner being, we're nourishing our soul. But same thing, you hear sometimes, of course, doctors recommend that pregnant women, for example, that they don't um, drink alcohol, that they don't smoke, they don't take drugs. Why? Because the baby can be born affected. Well, it's the same thing then. If our souls, if we're involved in all sorts of sins, all sorts of evil, all sorts of bad things, it affects our spiritual souls and it basically causes them to rot, if you like, inside. The good news, of course, is that and there's always confession, there's grace, and it can be washed off, but we must make it a way of life. And so just as a pregnant woman, she needs to eat as to maintain a healthy baby, so too you must be mindful of your souls and Jesus who lives within you. My children, how often have I told you that prayer is the food for your souls and that most of you do not pray enough. And when Our Lady says most of us do not pray enough, she's not scolding us that we're bad people. She's educating us 
It's like the doctor educating the pregnant woman saying you must be careful. You must be careful what you eat. You must be careful what you lift. You must be careful what exercises you do. You must be careful because these are the laws of nature. And Our Lady is saying the same thing. She's saying, I'm not trying to put pressure on you, to scold you, to give out to you. I'm simply explaining to you how the spiritual realm works, how the realm of the soul works, and what you must do if you like to maintain a healthy soul. So pray, my children, until prayer becomes your passion and your life, just as the expectant mother cares for her child. In other words, Our Lady wants us to fall in love with prayer. And sometimes this can be hard because... Believe it or not, as a child, there was one person in our household who absolutely hated prayer and um, had a tantrum every time um, they even tried to pray the rosary. And that child's name, believe it or not, was Michael. And you're looking at him. So obviously, I must have, as a child, found prayer exceptionally boring, with no meaning, couldn't get into it, and probably was distracted so much and distracted everybody else. So I, of all people, know exactly how difficult it can be to pray if you're not doing it right. But when you learn how to pray properly through talking to Jesus, opening up your heart to Jesus, talking about real life issues, talking about your struggles, prayer becomes almost like a therapy. Jesus becomes almost like your psychotherapist. Jesus becomes your counselor. Jesus becomes your coach. Jesus becomes your mentor. You read spiritual books. You read the lives of the saints. You look at the world around you. Everything becomes so different. Everything becomes so interesting. And prayer becomes like a passion. Prayer becomes super interesting. Not to mention that when you learn about the power of prayer, the power of miracles, miracles for your own life, miracles for the life of other people, it becomes amazingly interesting, amazingly joyful. But not overnight. You have to learn. And that's why it's good to surround ourselves with people who are enthusiastic about prayer. Surround us by people who have the joy of the Holy Spirit, the oomph of the Holy Spirit, if you like, and let them teach us. Because we all need to be taught. So she says, pray until prayer becomes your passion. So it becomes so exciting. It becomes part of us. So my children, begin preparing for Christmas by prayer. And when you see the frenzy of commercialism, turn inwardly to Jesus and console him. For those who do not know him and hurt him greatly over this holy season. It is true. Christmas is a time when Jesus suffers greatly as well. Because he's overlooked. So many people don't understand so many people do all sorts of sins and have no notion of forgiveness or nothing. And so it's very painful for Jesus because he loves us so much. He would really love for us all to understand the real and true meaning of Christmas. And that's where our lady says, yes, begin now and I will help you to have a very holy and peaceful Christmas. And it's like anything else. If you're going away on holidays and you plan it well, you plan the activities you're going to do, you plan how it will be, you even visualise how it will um, be. Maybe there's going to be someone on holidays that you don't really get on with. You kind of think of strategies, um, how you can um, make that situation better. So you can really kind of plan if you like to have a great holiday. Well, Our Lady is saying the same thing with prayer. When we mix prayer with action, we can really plan in prayer how to have a peaceful, holy, joyful Christmas. We can plan on what we'll do. We can plan how we'll deal with situations. We can pray for people. We can examine our own hearts. We can put aside unnecessary things like the Martha and Mary. Do we really need the most lavish Christmas dinner in the world? Do we really need to invite 100 people or whatever? Or would something more simple, more loving with our family be more appropriate? Or maybe Our Lady is going to call us to go into Medjugorje somewhere for Christmas. I don't know. Or maybe we are going to bring some joy and love and hope to someone this Christmas. And we're saying, what can we do? Same thing when it comes to the Mass and the liturgy. We can plan, if you like, where will we go to Mass? How can we maybe contribute with the Mass? How can we contribute to the prayer life? How can we help bring Christmas to others? How we, can we contribute in our local churches? Where can we go where there's a beautiful service? How can we basically bring that and nourish our souls? How can we have enough time for prayer? How can we prepare if we're um, in charge of food? How can we do that enough in advance so that we're not rushing and we're not stressed and so that um, we have time for the spiritual side? Who can we help? Who can we love? Who can we support? Maybe there's a little retreat. It could be an online retreat, a three-day retreat, a week retreat that we could do. If Christmas is going to be very busy, maybe we could do it at the start of December or maybe the start of November. So how are we preparing our hearts? Maybe there's an app on our phone that we could get for little daily reminders, daily reflections. Even as we attend the Mass, 
There's somebody playing the trumpet out there, but I don't think it's for Christmas. But even as we attend the Mass now, how can we make that a preparation for Christmas? How can we reflect and think, wow, this is the baby Jesus that was born 2,000 years ago, and this is the same Mass and the same continuation. So see, there are all these things we can do. And the more we do this, the more we put in, the more we get out. And the more, basically, the baby Jesus will be a big, healthy baby, if you like, for Christmas. But also our souls will be ready, so we will be able to receive more graces. So Christmas should be a time when we can receive the maximum amount of graces and not eat the maximum amount of turkey. So on that note, let us not be turkeys for Christmas. Let us be saints and holy people for Christmas. And let us begin now by preparing our hearts in prayer, in love, in joy, in gratitude. And by our example, let's show other people as well how to prepare. And let's hope that fellow playing the trumpet is preparing also for Christmas. God bless you.